like a dumpling, even though you don't have to really cook it. These, you know, you're in there, so <laughs> give you a secret. All right, and for my vegan people, just FYI, I'm not making the vegan one here today. I have it for you to taste, but I'm gonna tell you all of these ingredients are the same for you. The only thing that changes is instead of the jack, excuse me, instead of the turkey, you can use either jackfruit, and if you're vegan, I'm pretty sure you're very well versed in jackfruit at this point. It has the texture of like pulled chicken or pulled pork, but it's a fruit. It has a very neutral flavor profile, so you can season it with whatever you want to, and it literally tastes like you're eating meat. So I, for jackfruit, you know, we're in Memphis, we like barbecue, so I would do it like barbecue jackfruit, so you can get a little pulled pork or pulled jackfruit too. You can do a lot with that. But if you're someone who's just kind of like, I, don't, I just like all, I'm a vegan, but I like only vegetables, only vegetables. You can do this same thing with assorted mushrooms. So you can take you some portabella, some creminis, all of those, th all those things, put them together and use that. Also, instead of the cream of chicken, you can use cream of mushroom, cream of celery, cream of onion, just one of those other things. Actually, excuse me, I'm telling a story. If you are vegan, you cannot use cream of anything. If you're a person who is vegetarian, you just don't, you're not vegan, but you just, you can use these. But if you're a person who is completely vegan, like no dairy in your diet at all, you want to be someone who gets a, a, a non-dairy, maybe heavy cream or a non-dairy cream source. You can find a lot of those at Whole Foods, uh, Fresh Market, that kind of place. All right? So th those are our ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and get this party started, all right? So we, what we want to do is we want to start off putting our Dutch oven or stove. Excuse me. There we go. On medium high heat. Make sure we don't have that too high. And then once you have it on my medium high heat, we're gonna immediately go in with your cooking oil. You can use olive oil. These days I've switched over to avocado oil. It has a lot more flavor. The burn temperature is a lot lower, so you know we can it won't smoke up the place. So I go in with avocado oil, but if you use the classic olive oil, it ain't gonna do nothing to you. And we want to let that heat up for a second. And once that's heat up, we're going to start off with our leftover turkey. But while that's getting situated, I already have my one onion cut up, so you want one yellow onion. Most people don't use bell pepper for this, but you know, I, I'm loyal. So we're going to go with a bell pepper. I'm now going to cut up a little bit of celery so the celery can get in on the action. And that right there is our Cajun mirepoix. Anybody know what a mirepoix is? If you, if you love you some Cajun Creole, New Orleans food down there, pretty much everything they cook got, they call it the Holy Trinity. Yeah. Onion, onion, green bell pepper, cel celery. So we're gonna start off with the New Orleans Holy Trinity. And then we're just gonna add a little carrots for extra flavor, all right? Something else for my vegan people. Again, I said you can use jackfruit, I said you can use mushrooms, but honestly you can use any vegetable that you want to. Like if you want to put Brussels sprouts in here, Okay. So I'm chopping up my celery. We want to use about three stalks of that. By now, my oil should be a little hot, so I'm going to go in with my turkey. And let it start heating up. Okay? And so while my turkey is doing this business, I'm going to go over here and chop up my celery. Y'all hear that sound? That may be working. We clocked in. What y'all cooking for Thanksgiving out there? Why well, I'm over here chopping. Who all been to the school already? Oh, y'all about to kiss. Y'all about to be in Kroger in the back. Oh, I'm trying to get to the front. And y'all already know they make you scan your own groceries now. Y'all come on now. Y'all supposed to be on the good food. <laughs> Listen, y'all better leave here right now. If y'all taste this, go on to the store. <laughs> Go to the store. It was it was raining yesterday. That's why y'all didn't go. That's why y'all didn't go. All right. So though none of you have been to the store yet, most of you have been to the store yet. When you finally do make it, what you make? Anybody in here making something like really interesting that they're like really proud about? Especially my vegan people. I want to know what y'all eat. Cause y'all still ain't convinced me about that vegan mac and cheese yet. Huh. Vegetable lasagna. I can rock with that. You said you were vegan? What's on the menu tomorrow? Uh, it's Thursday. You doing the cooking? How do you cook your vegan mac and cheese? I'm very curious. 
the what cheese, you use the dairy cheese, the non dairy cheese. I've seen people like literally take sweet potatoes and puree it up and use that for cheese sauce. And I just think that's, that don't sound like mac and cheese to me, that sounds like mac and yam. <laughs> I, I, this is same meal, just a, a little bit. I got you. I'll send you the recipe for making I appreciate that. Oh, that, that's not, I can clock in with that. I can mess with the mushroom. Anybody else? It, no, you don't have to be a vegan person. Any of my meat eaters, are y'all eating anything interesting? Because, you know, my family got to the point where we got tired of turkey and dressing sometimes, so every now and then we might fry some fish, eat tacos, like all kind of interesting things. So anybody doing anything else groovy for the holiday? You said you were doing what now? Smoke wings. Smoke wings. I, I can get with that. Okay. Say that one more time. You said salmon? Ooh. I'm actually making salmon tomorrow, too. I'm, a, I'm responsible for the greens and the salmon. And because I got a lot of carrots left over for this dish, I'm probably going to figure out how to make a good carrot soup plate. You stop acting like they bit their children. You remember the, the carrot soup plate at Piccadilly? Yeah. That, that thing slaps. <laughs> it tastes like yams, huh? All right? So I got my turkey going in here, and I'm just going to add my vegetables to the situation. So I just chopped up this celery. I'm going to go in with some of my green bell pepper, even though that's not standard. Today we're doing what we want to do. Giving it a little holy trinity. And we're gonna go in with our onion. About one chopped yellow onion. And I'm gonna give all of this a good stir together. And I still gotta chop up my carrots a little bit, so I'm gonna let that do its thing while I chop up a few carrots to go in there. All right. While I'm chopping up these carrots, for the next step, I'm going to need a little help. Is anybody down to volunteer? It's the front row for me. Your hand went up like you were really excited. Come on, friend. <laughs> Come on. These carrots cut up. Thank you. Yeah, could you give us a little squeeze, please, Thank you. <laughs> All right, now we're going in with our carrot. All right, so before we start the next step, I got just recap what we did so far. We went in with some olive oil over your cooking oil. We put in our leftover turkey. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, that's jackfruit or mushrooms for you. We gave that a second to heat up. You don't have to cook it because it was already good. And then we went in with our vegetables right after that. We got our onion, our bell pepper, our celery, our carrots, and now we're gonna come back with a little bit of garlic. And if you're anything like me, if a recipe says two things to go up garlic, that means fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. turn that up a bit. Is it smelling good out there to y'all? Like it's smelling good to me? Yeah. All right, now this is the moment where you season this. Now, per the recipe, it just says salt, pepper, that kind of stuff. But you know, I get a little more interesting than that. So you can really flavor this however you want to. I like a little spice in my life, so I'm gonna go in with a little Cajun chicken and six, excuse me, a Cajun seasoning. To spice things up a little bit. Then I'm gonna go with some poultry seasoning. And you know, a lot of times we don't really see that until it's time to make dressing, but it does other things. All right. And it's important to note that for my vegan people, even though it's labeled poultry seasoning, if you read the ingredients, there's no animal products in there. So though it's not labeled vegan, you still can use the average seasoning. The only seasonings you can't use are the ones that have maybe like chicken bouillon or something like that in it. So a lot of the seasons I use, even if I like, I use rotisserie chicken seasoning a lot for everything because though I'll be making vegetables, it's still a really great flavor profile. And a little bit of pepper. Like salt and pepper. Is it Cajun seasoning salt free? This one is not, no. No, sir. But Tony Saffirance has a really good salt free uh, alternative these days. All right, so I'm giving that a quick stir. And now I'm going to go in with my chicken broth. If you're vegan, vegetarian, you go in with vegetable broth. 
And because I have, I said this recipe calls for two cups of turkey, but I, I might have put like three in here. So I'm gonna go with a little, add a little water to my chicken broth here, just to make sure that I have enough liquid for my, my dumplings to, to, to develop it. Okay. So I'm gonna turn my heat up for the sake of time so I can get this up to a good boil. And while we're doing that, see, that was ready. The biscuits almost fell over because they said it's my turn. <laughs> my friend, give me your name again. Jenny. Jenny and I are gonna make dumplings now, okay? With the canned biscuits. And again, let me get this over first. It's, such, it's so satisfying to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never know what's gonna happen. Right. All right, so I'm gonna give her four of these to play with, and I'm gonna take the other four. And so, really all you have to do, sometimes you've seen people roll their dumplings like long, like this. You've seen people roll their dumplings into big balls like this. And you've seen people roll your, their dumplings into small ones. That truly becomes a matter of preference. For me personally, that large amount of dough in my mouth at one time is a little weird for me. So I prefer smaller. That's also why I really enjoy the gnocchi and substitute of the dumpling because it's perfect size and it's made with a combination of potato and flour. So it just also adds a different little flair there. It's not just a big, you know, doughy flour. All right. <clears throat> I also like to season mine up with some fresh herbs and a little salt and pepper, particularly if I'm using a canned biscuit, because then if you're gonna eat a lot of dough, it can be really, really flat. Um, so I'm gonna let you decide how you want to. It's easy to spread it out first, and then go for it. And I'm gonna put some fresh thyme in mine over here, because you know, I like a little razzle dazzle. You want some of this thyme, friend? I got you. Here we go. Some fresh herbs, we've got some rosemary on hand. This is Thanksgiving, so I'm pretty sure all of us have sage for our dressing. Chop up some of that fresh sage, put it in there. If secret with the sage, if you really want the flavor of sage to pop, you can like fry it lightly first before you put it in something. So like if you're making that, like if you really want to impress somebody with your dressing and you don't want to use the shake, fry you up a little, not like deep fry, but just a light little fry for a second when it comes out, it's crispy, chop that up, it really like, brings out the flavor of the uh, sage. So, rosemary, sage, thyme, whatever you got on hand. I'm gonna go with thyme here. Yeah, that really elevates the flavor. Some people, if you don't wanna fry it, just cause you're being cautious of like, you know, your diet and all that kind of stuff, if you just, Clap the sage in your hand before you use it. It also helps bring out that flavor. And you can use that for your dressing, not just this recipe. All right? So I got mine going. I'm going to hit mine with just a little bit of this Cajun seasoning. Why not? If I ever get a cooking show, that's going to be mine. You know how Emmerich be like, boom, or bam. Be like, a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> All right? So I'm going to. There we go. Amen. Wow. Claim that. Speak those things. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ball mine up into different fours and then just take those fours and make them into mini balls. And this Cajun seasoning plus this thyme inside of these balls is going to add a little. Also important to note that if once you put these in the liquid, they're going to expand a bit. So if you want it to be small, you need to roll it really, really small. Because it's going to probably double in size or whatever. All right, let me come over here and check on that while my friend, oh, oh, we boiling now, baby, here we go. So now that it's boiling, and it usually takes a little longer than this, but for the sake of time, I want to get to the good stuff. Once it comes to the boil, this is when you come in with the cream of chicken. And that cream of chicken is gonna help thicken it up a little bit. Because right now we have soup, we, we, we don't, you know, right now it's soup. And we don't want it to be too soupy. So this is gonna help this is gonna help to thicken this up. And the dumplings, that dough from the dumpling is also gonna help it thicken up and make it a lot thicker sauce here. Oh, it smells fantastic. Yeah. 
give it a stir so we can incorporate all of these flavors to make sure that the cream of chicken is getting incorporated into the broth. I'm gonna have to put you on stand, brother. Again, she's like, oh, over there. Put my hand up. Put my hand up. <laughs> I'm over here staring. Okay, that's going good. Let me see if I can find something to taste this meat to make sure we're doing what we need to do. Does it, has anybody made the dish? If, from my friends who were here with us last year, has anybody made that dish? I did. Did? Did the people enjoy it? Mm. Alright, we need a little more seasoning here. So I'm going to go in a little bit more of this poultry seasoning. Now listen, this ain't on the list of things to get. I got me a little salt-free garlic and herbs. So I'm going to yeah. add that to it. Again, you can play with this how you want to play with it when you get home. I enjoy good salt-free seasonings with a bunch of stuff in it because you can darn near dump the whole bottle in there and be like, it just tastes good, but it's not salty. I don't know. Right. All right. So it's coming back up to a boil. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. And once it gets to a boil, a solid boil, you reduce it to a simmer, and that's when you go in with your dump. Okay. What's everybody doing for Thanksgiving? Anybody traveling? At home, resting. I think for a lot of people, Thanksgiving is like the rest holiday, and then they just wait for Christmas to like turn up. Because, you know, you get that sad, sad, it's like Christmas could fall on any day of the week. All right, looking good, friend. All right, so give a, a, a round of applause for these beautiful gentlemen. I don't know if y'all can see them or not. But my friend hooked these up, and they're nice and small, too. Nice and small. I hate. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you so much, friend. I hate a dumpling that's too thick. All right, so I'm going to go in with her dumpling. You may not can see this, but you can smell it. Everything is in a bowl here. One more quick recap. We first just added our leftovers. Leftovers. We added our vegetables next. That was what? Celery. What's one more thing? Carrots. Carrots. Uh huh. What was my next step, friend? Well, first, before I bring it to a boil, I add my what to bring it to a boil? Mm -mm. There we go. I added my stock of broth first because you have to have a liquid to bring it to a boil. <laughs> Then I added my seasonings, oh, yes. After, then what was next? I've been hearing it. I added the cream. And once I added the cream, I now then reduce it. I bring it to a boil with the cream in there. I make sure I stir thoroughly to make sure it's not, it can be clumpy if you don't make sure that's incorporated well. So uh, I make sure that's at a boil and everything's incorporated. And then I bring it down to a simmer. Normally I bring it down to the simmer, but for the sake of cooking this fast day, I'm going to leave it. But if you're cooking this at home, once it's in a boil, you bring it down to a simmer, and that's when you start adding your dumplings. I did. It was stock of Oh, yes. Thank you. Yes. So traditionally, if you're following this recipe, you probably won't have to uh, add water. But before, because I'm making this for a lot of people, uh, I had to add a little bit so it can stretch a little further. Thank you for correcting me, friend. <laughs> 